Next one. Some orphans. And we are looking after a few, uh, quite a number of orphans. Next one. Oh, you see, not, not so bad. Next one, next one. This is a school. We built in nomad area in, in eastern Tibet. There was no school whatsoever. Kids would not go to school at all. And within a week, the school was full with 165 kids. A lot of girls also, we insisted to have them. And now they are food boarding there, they have education, food, which is, makes it easier for the family, clothing, medicine. Oh, that's a wonderful achievement. Next. Next one. I know that nice, nice place. Next one. Next again. And they'd like to decorate the schools. Now we paint the university like that. Again, next one, please. And this is a school for 700 children in Amdo, the, the birthplace uh, province of the Dalai, so the Dalai Lama. Next one. Next one. And bridges. You know, here when you want to cross a bridge, you ask where is the next bridge. But there sometimes you have to go walk or ride a horse or drive a car for 40, 50 kilometers. Next one. So we need to build bridges. It's a big change for in their life. Next one. And this is a bridge on the Yangtze River. We are very proud of it. It's like building the Three Gorges Dam, you know. So this is when there's no bridge. It's our car. <laughs> Another one. Okay, this is a clinic in Nepal where we treat 45,000 patients a year, 60% for free. We have AIDS, TB program, palliative care unit. Next one. And that's again just running around in Tibet. Next one. Yes, just go on. In the end, very cute little Tibetan girl. Next one. There's such a candor in their sort of gaze. Next one. Yes. Another one. That's just something. Next one. Yes. Okay. Next one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Next one. And this is the Dalai Lama who. For me, is really the ex exemplification of what compassion is, and it's no wonder that what he, when he finishes the teachings or a public talk, and he might say, you know, if anything I have said might be useful to you, please make use of it. If not, just drop it. And he said, in any case, what really matters is to have good heart. So it may seem such a Naive statement if it comes in anyone else's mouth, but when it comes from an immense heart, suddenly it makes complete sense, and he said, we say yes, if we have good heart, then our life is going to be fulfilled, we are going to be of use to others. So, thank you for your attention. Oh, that's it. That's it. Thank you very much, Matla. Um, we'll have some uh, f a few uh, questions uh, from the audience, but this time we would prefer actually uh, if you write down the questions and then we'll read it out instead of each uh, standing up and ask question. We have the volunteers distributing papers uh, before and. Uh, just uh, let uh, Matthew recover from this uh, talk, and uh, then we'll collect the questions. I think you should recover from the talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will have a, a book signing later uh, after the question and answer uh, session. And uh, also we have an announcement for the winner of the uh, book draw. We were going to do. I actually haven't got the names of the winners yet. I will do that later.
Uh, papers here. Please, please, please. Are you with you? You don't mind. I, uh, I think we have enough uh, questions uh, now because we, due to short time, I th we won't have uh, time for all the um, uh, to deal with the each of the questions that are coming uh, up here. Uh, I'll try to randomly pick about five, and then we'll uh, uh, see how the times we're doing. Uh, the first question it says, how much weight or importance do you place on compassion, love, kindness towards the self? To what? Oh, the last word? Yeah, it's uh, how much weight, importance do you place on compassion and love, kindness towards the self? Towards the self? Yeah. I mean yourself? Self. Must be, yes. Yes. Well, um, of course, the notion of what is the self is another question. Uh, but well, in, in, in one's own experience, uh, um, it's clear that uh, we need to identify within ourselves the deep wish we have uh, for, for genuine happiness. We, sh we should not disguise that or, or ignore that. The idea, may I be safe? Uh, may I be secure? May I be happy? We need to acknowledge that with sort of almost with humility that yes, that's what I really want. And so if we can do so, then it's so much easier to transport oneself in someone's mind and say yes, of course, they also want to be safe, to be healthy, to be happy, even which is also our own trauma. We, in order to achieve that, sometimes we use means that will bring just the opposite. As it says in the Buddhist teachings, we want happiness, but we turn our back to it. We want to avoid suffering, but we run to the sharp blade of the law of cause and effect and hurt ourselves because of confusion, ignorance, lack of skillful skill. skill. So, even though everyone, including ourselves, so we can recognize that no matter how, sometimes we could be harmful to others because of lack of skill, but still the, anyone wants to find this happiness. No one wakes up in the morning thinking, may I suffer the whole day? So, if we recognize that, then if people behave, and ourselves we do behave also unskillfully, we think more like a kind of sickness, or like someone who needs a more wisdom, or to know better, or, or like a, a person who lost their mind, and therefore we need more to see it with a compassionate look of a, of a physician, rather than someone who is condemning or thinking that he's an evil person. So yes, we need to, and also to have compassion, loving kindness for others, we are one of the sentient beings. It doesn't mean that we have to exclude ourselves or neglect ourselves, that's not at all. It's precisely by recognizing our strong wish for happiness is the best way to acknowledge the wish and right for happiness and the wish and right to avoid suffering in others and respect it.